The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, penned by Renal Wersmith, Washington Irving, were first published back in 1819. It is a tale I'm sure you're all familiar with. With the story of the hapless schoolmaster Ichabod Crane and his encounter with the Headless Hessian is one that has been told and reimagined many times. From the eerie Disney short to the lavish gothic retelling of Tim Burton, the tale has never failed to captivate and enthrall. But surely this is just a yarn of frightful fancy. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, today's tale takes us to the lonely country roads of Oncut, Butterton, Worslow and Leek in Staffordshire. Even nowadays, amidst the hubbub of the modern world, these winding roads retain a somewhat eerie sense of place. One can only imagine how a traveller might have felt back in the day, traipsing down these forbidding country lanes. Any wonder such tales of ghouls and goblins arose in this place. The most well known of which is that of the headless horseman of Butterton Moor. Now no one quite knows the origin of this particular village phantom. Some say he were a murderer beheaded for his crime, ever doomed to roam the earth in search of his executioner. Others that he were a knight who fought against the Scots who were decapitated in battle, his gallant steed transporting his headless corpse home for burial in the county he so loved. Some even say it's an evil spirit fallen from heaven, a rebel angel swayed to Lucifer's cause, forever forsaken his penance to roam the lonely lanes of the Staffordshire Moorlands. A somewhat specific punishment if you ask me. As you can tell, the origins of this spook are somewhat sketchy, but there are those over the centuries who are said to have had encounters with this headless apparition. The first and most well known of these concerns a farmer returning home to Oncut from the market at Leek. After selling his wares, our good farmer had decided to partake of ale and good company in the many fine hostilities of that most delightful of market towns. As such, on his journey home, he found himself fatigued and beer addled. Not the best state to be in on the long trudge home down them abandoned paths. That's when he spied a rider trotting up ahead. Mistaking the rider for a neighbour, he called out, Here, give us a lift home, would ye? Well, the rider was more than happy to oblige. Before the hapless farmer had a chance to fully process the fact that the horsemen were headless, the rider had scooped him up in an iron embrace. Away the phantom horse sprang at owlish speed, clearing fences, edges and stiles with not a second thought. Through the countryside they raced. Nothing seemed to slow the horseman. At one point, the farmer swore he felt the topmost branches of the trees brush his feet. The common in Heathland became but a blur as he was carried at breakneck speed through the night. The farmer was found at the break of dawn, crumpled in an heap just shy of his front door, feverish and babbling of some headless spectre. So battered, bruised and broken was he by his ordeal that he was put straight to bed. But rest did not prevail him. For soon after, he died. His last words, The horseman, the horseman. Surely a one-off story easily dismissed as a fantasy conjured by drink and maladies brought on by cold air and exposure. Yet, 
there are more tales of this kind. On another occasion, a woman of Onkut had travelled to Warslow to visit friends. After a time, her husband arrived to take her home. Not long into their journey back to Onkut, a rider fell into step with them. Soon became apparent this was no ordinary rider, for he had no head. Immediately, the horse on which the pair both rode began to whinny and shy away from their spectral companion. But of the farmer and his wife, it was only the farmer who could see this frightful manifestation. And not wanting to strike fear in the heart of his good wife, he kept his head down and continued home, the headless phantom dogging their every step. Of course, being the proud man that he was, the farmer was unwilling to admit what he had seen. But over the following days, the memory of the event began to niggle, found himself losing sleep over it, none the least when his horse dropped dead at the plough, then not long after his faithful hound, the poor beast succumbing to some strange, wasting sickness. No, these things he could not inherit, and with trepidation, he told his wife of the terrible vision he'd seen on their ride home from Warslow. The Headless Horseman legend made its debut in the Sentinel in October 1880. According to the article, the horseman inspired a great deal of dread in the populace of Onkut. The article states, Many a tale of this horseman and his exploits have been told in whispers around the fire in winter evenings of the old stone built in the dog and partridge of our village. So terrified have the listeners become at these horrid ghostly narratives that travellers have been half frightened out of their wits, even by the ancient squeaking sign that swings over the door of the hostelry. However, it was not just the fearful spectre of the headless horseman that cast its shadow over the village. No, don't forget, these were hard times. Highway robbery, an ever-present danger. And those dark, desolate rural lanes were the perfect hunting ground for highwaymen. Highwaymen who reveled in the horseman myth, who weren't afraid to demonstrate a flair for theatrics. The 1880 article goes on to say, These stories were put to a practical use by men who took to the road as highway robbers, and to whom a ghostly disguise just served their turn. Of these mounted highwaymen, there were two or three who acted in concert, sharing the spoil, and a good business was done until the gang was broken up by one of their number. William Firm of Bottom House, about two miles from Onkut, being arrested and afterwards hung at Stafford. As you can see, the horseman had quite the malign influence on the good folk of Onkut. It seemed to pose quite the existential threat to the community. Little wonder then that before long the aid of the church was called upon to once and for all lay the horseman's wandering soul to rest. According to the same 1880 article, it would seem that this intervention had mixed success. The report reads, Some clergymen were called in to read the prayers that were provided to prevent this goblin from troubling the neighbourhood any more. But the spirit confessed to these holy men, when forced into speech, that it was one of four evil spirits cast out of heaven and condemned to roam over the face of the earth till the crack of doom should release it from its terrestrial wanderings. What I infer from that is no dice. Valiant attempt at banishment on the part of the clergyman, but... Alas, it would seem this spirit was cursed by a far 
higher authority. What is more interesting though, is that the horseman confessed to being one of four evil spirits cast out of heaven. Could this imply that the Headless Spectre is one of the four riders out of the Book of Revelation? Or one of the many angels that fell in Lucifer's war against the throne? It is certainly ambiguous. Call me a cynic, but I can't rule out just a touch of hyperbole on the part of our courageous clerics in this matter. Trying to save face, I guess. But, alas, we'll never know. This would not be the only time an attempt to capture the horseman would be made. In the 1920s, a local journalist, along with members of the Leak Young People's Labour League, attempted to track the ghostly rider down. In an interview with a Mrs Wood of Back Lane Butterton, the journalist was told of a nightmarish experience the woman had had whilst on her way back from the May Fair. I was with a little boy at the time, and it was a moonlit night. We'd been to the May Fair and were returning home. Suddenly, my attention was drawn to something approaching along the road. Terrified, I jumped over the wall by the roadside. As we crouched down, I saw the horse turn to the side of the road, and imagine my horror when the horse, with the headless rider, walked straight through the wall of an adjoining building. In a later interview, a farmer named Mr William Ambleton, and respected member of the Butterton Parish Council, gave credence to Mrs Wood's account, stating, I definitely thought there was something in it. I have heard of several people who have seen the ghostly rider. He went on to say that the rider was often said to appear on the Grindon side of the village at the hour of midnight. Of course, all this talk of horseman sighting spurred on many a would-be ghost hunter who wished to track down the legend for themselves. In 1933, two groups of ramblers resolved to prove the story of the horseman one way or t'other. The first group failed to find any sign of the horseman, later stating that they made a basic error in regards to getting their dates muddled. You see, belief held that the horsemen were meant to ride out at the time of the week fair. This bunch of geniuses had arrived a week early. Convenient excuse if you ask me. The second group at least got the dates correct. However, their plans became so well known, they soon found themselves pursued by a large crowd, equally eager to sight the headless ghost. What ensued was something of an impromptu party, and the ghost hunt was quickly abandoned in favour of revelry and merrymaking. Any excuse for a piss-up, I guess. But what is strange is this. At around the same time of the drunken free-for-all, Another group of ramblers had set out from Leek to Butterton Moor. Their intention to hold an all-night vigil on that lonely, weather-beaten landscape in an attempt to catch a sight of the Phantom Rider. They saw nothing. But, as they made their way back home to Leek, they could have sworn they heard the telltale sound of hooves coming deep from within the early morning mist. So, if you just so happen to find yourself travelling on those old, dusty roads between Butterton, Oncott, Leek and Warslow, and you hear the clippity-clop of hooves falling in step with your car, then maybe it might be wise to speed up a bit, for the headless horseman of Butterton Moor may well be on your trail. Anyway, you know where I am if you need out. Just hit that bell and give us a thumbs up, eh? Have a good one. I'll be seeing you.